than Tony. And when we first met, we knew our hearts and our, our vision and our passion was in sync. So what I'm going to do since I'm the last speaker of the day is I'm going to try to keep you awake, pay attention. <laughs> I used to be a school teacher. So there will be no writing, passing notes, chewing up or looking at your blackberries or I'll call you out. Oh. What I'm going to do, because I think it's most important, we, you all have had speakers and speakers on the issues, but I'm going to talk to you, I'm calling it the politics of aging, because I am born, and actually I was made in America, I'd like to tell the young man. Me <laughs> too. <laughs> but I was born and raised in Washington, D.C., where politics is our national sport, not the Redskins, because they're not so good. But what I want to talk about is the politics of aging, and that includes our, our future and current partnership. But first of all, you all know the origin of the word politics, right? Anybody? No. It comes from the Greek word poly, many-sided, ticks, bloodsuckers. <laughs> I like to say, Politicians are like diapers. They need to be changed regularly and for the same reason. <laughs> so the question is, who are these politicians? Well, we know they're Democrats, they're Republicans, they're liberals, they're conservatives, they're left and they're right. But what does that really mean? You know, when a president gets elected, there's two kinds of fairy tales. The first one is once upon a time, and the second one is, if elected, I promise. So who are Democrats and Republicans? That's what I want to talk about. I'm going over to the right. If I'm on the right, because you all have to know what we are up against. So I'm going to give you a little different perspective, my Washington bipartisan perspective for now. Call me a Republican. Call me a conservative. Here's what I believe. I believe in less government. We've all heard every candidate say that. I believe in states' rights. I don't believe in Washington telling me what to do. I believe in the trickle-down effect. Remember that from Ronald Reagan? I like to call it the incontinence effect. <laughs> it does trickle down, but you don't know when and you don't know where. But their idea is, if business does well, we all do well, it trickles down. So we don't want to over-regulate business. We don't want to over-tax business. We want business to thrive so it trickles down and we do well. So we don't believe in over-regulation. We don't believe in Washington, big government. We believe in states' rights. We believe in personal responsibility. Give me the tax breaks in my pocket and let me decide how to spend it. Now, my Democratic friends, all of you, let me talk about what we believe. As Democrats, we have some different ideas. And this is important that you understand who wants what and why, so we can be better fighters. So as a Democrat, I don't believe in that trickle-down effect. I kind of believe in the wedgie effect. You know how your panties get stuck in the middle? <laughs> I believe in the middle class. Tax breaks to the middle income. Raise the minimum wage. We believe in a strong middle class is what has made this country better. We believe, if we're not so afraid of Washington. It was, and Washington gives us guidelines. Clean air, clean water, save a tree, hug an owl. We got a lot of good things from Washington. We're not so afraid of, we like personal responsibility, but we like social responsibility. So do you see, class, we have a little bit of a difference here? Here's a joke. There's a waiter at a fancy restaurant. Lady comes in and he says, tonight's special, madame, is braised tongue. And she says, oh, I would never eat anything from a cow's mouth. He said, oh, very good, madame. Will you have eggs tonight? Oh. <laughs> now, the point of that joke is we see things, we see things not as they are, but as we are. I think we are made differently, some of us. We just see things differently. We are entitled to our own opinions, but we are not entitled to our own facts. So class, when did all of this start? When did we decide how much government is enough? What's the role of government? 
1776. 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 
but that's true. Once everybody's been paid, what's left over is invested in government issue bonds by law. It is the law. Now those bonds, you all have heard the argument from your family members, they're stealing our money, there's nothing there. Those are regular US bonds with the full faith and backing by the United States government. The same bonds that China buys. So those bonds are used because every bond you buy is used. They don't take the money, put it in the bank, and let it sit there. They use the money, but it accrues interest, like some men. It accrues interest and is redeemed upon its full maturity, like any other bond. And it has the full faith and backing of the United States government. So it's not stolen. It's not used inappropriately. By law, it's used as a bond. Once the bond has met its budget for the year, because the government does have a budget, believe it or not, what is left over is the Social Security surplus. And that surplus, as of today, is $2.7 trillion. Now, why is it so much money, and where is it? It is there, it is accounting, it is all electronic. But it's there because they knew the baby boomers were born. You know, not everybody in government's totally stupid. <laughs> the actuaries, you know what an actuary is? It's an accountant with less personality. <laughs> but the actuaries, the statisticians, projected. They knew when the baby boomers were born, when to build schools. They knew when they would retire. So in 1982, they changed the law to build up this surplus for the baby boomers. So that's why we have the surplus. And there are people who would love to have that money invested in the private market. Because if you're on this side of the aisle, you worship at the altar of the free market. That's what the Tea Party's all about. We're almost libertarians. The free market, everything is good in the free market. But that's how Social Security works. So, that's the fact. Where's the problem? Does it go broke? No. <clears throat> no, who said no, yeah? I said no. <laughs> oh, you said no, then you're with me. Uh, I'll give my reason first, because I'm the speaker. <laughs> it's real easy to figure that it never goes broke, because there's always people working and paying in. So when you're talking to that relative who may not be too bright, <laughs> you can say, it doesn't go broke, but they use the word insolvent, which to most people means broke. But they, the actuaries don't mean broke by insolvent. They mean less coming in than going out. So the real deal is it never goes broke. There's always money coming in. The honest answer is, is it enough? That's the question. And the actuaries just came out, the Social Security Trust Fund administrators just came out, and the, the projection is the same as last year. We can pay full benefits until 2033 without doing anything, but with no tweaking or anything, but we should. We should be talking about how do we make up the shortfall that comes in 2033. They're projecting a 77, you could pay out 77%. So we need to pay out 100% at that point. And there's a lot of ways we can do it. This is not the big problem. Because here's what you could do. Right now, how many of you wonderful, wonderful workers made over $100,000? Don't tell me, because it's a private secret. If you did, even today, you pay into Social Security on $113,000. So Bill Gates might do that in one afternoon. But most people don't pay that much in. But if you make $250,000, you still pay in only on $113,000. If you're Bill Gates, you pay in on $113,000. See, the beauty of Social Security, and these are the things we need to talk about. Social Security doesn't care if you're black or white, rich or poor, doesn't even care if you're pretty or ugly. If you pay in, you take out. 
it's equal. You are judged on your whole work history from the day you start working at 16 to when you stop working at well, whatever. I'm still working and I'm up there. <laughs> but as a matter of fact, I'm proud that I'm still working and I'm collecting my social security. And I'm still paying in. But they take your whole work history. So what they're doing for me now every year is at the end of the year they recalculate and I get a little bit more because I'm still paying in. So it's based fairly on your work history. If you raise that 113,000, they call it scrap the cap, yep. to 250 or more, you can take care of that 77% shortfall. If you have a pathway to citizenship, so the people who are getting paid under the table are paying into Social Security, you have more workers paying in. If you raise the FICA tax, now nobody in Washington says tax. I bet you haven't heard that word. You might hear raise revenue, <laughs> but they don't say tax anymore. It's a dirty word. But if you raised it over 10 years very slowly, that would take care of the problem. Or if you did a little bit of each of those, and there are many other good ideas on the table we should be talking about. But they, they're those people who would like to still see it privatized, who are saying we can't afford this entitlement, you've all heard that. They are trying to scare the American people to think that this is a burden we're going to leave to our grandchildren. But it's easy to do if you don't know how it works. So no, it's not an entitlement. You paid in, and if you, if you are not here legally, you will not take out. If you have not worked 10 years or 40 work credits, you are not eligible. So it is a contract between you and the government. So it is not an entitlement, it is an earned benefit, and it is a social insurance. One last thing, it's social, because you all know people who died and didn't collect. And the reason it's social is that money goes into the risk pool to pay for the widow, the child, or the disabled. So know how it works so that you're not fooled and so that you can have a discussion because people have the wrong information. So if you arm yourself with the facts and the Alliance has a wonderful piece on Social Security. But here's the danger today. Our president has put in a budget. And in the budget is something called the change CPI. I know you're going to have speakers about it tomorrow, so I'm going to give you just a little bit of information that will help you be armed. The chain CPI is a different way of figuring out your cola. How many of you get too much of a cola? <laughs> That's the best joke of the day. Well, if you don't think you get enough of a cola now, the chain CPI is less. That's the bottom line. Technically, you all have a great piece on it, but here's the simple explanation. Right now, the COLA, cost of living adjustment, is based on a market basket of goods, meaning they actually send people out and they go to the store. What's the cost of a refrigerator and meat and cars and gas and all of the things that most people who are not on a fixed income are spending money on? And they take that and they decide what is it inflation. And of course, that's how people raise rent and things because they base it on inflation. Well, a chain CPI goes out and sends the people out and they'll price steak. Maybe it's gone up, but you can substitute steak for hamburger. So it's not going to hurt you because it's based on a substitution market basket of goods. You may not be able to go on vacation, but you could buy a flat screen TV. You may not be able to buy, a, you don't need any refrigerator because you, you'll wear out before your refrigerator, but something that else that might wear out. Actually, everything's planned, obs planned obsolescence now. But the bottom line deal is 
it starts immediately if it goes into effect, and it affects veterans as well as Social Security recipients. It starts immediately at about a 3% reduction, and it's cumulative. So it's about $130 less a year. So this has been put in by our president. So as Tony said, it's the Democrats we're worried about. We know the Republicans love it. They love the change CPI, they want to change the entitlements. We have to do that to save the country. And they've convinced a lot of people that's true. But our own president has put in this change CPI as his bargaining chip. So it's like Will Rogers said, I don't belong to any organized party, I'm a Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the other biggie is Medicare and then I'll talk a minute about Medicaid, because those are the other two, quote, entitlements. You know, when they talk about entitlements, do you hear anybody talking about farm subsidies? <laughs> you don't hear them talking about all those other entitlements, but you do hear them talking about the ones that affect seniors. Medicare is the second one. I like to say Medicare is like a hospital gown. It doesn't give you full coverage, and you know what's hanging out in the breeze. <laughs> but Medicare is also called an entitlement, and I say it's an earned benefit. You've paid in your FICA tax all of your working years into Medicare. And that FICA tax pays for Medicare A, which is the hospital part. Medicare B is the doctor part. Now, B is a cost share. You have to know how it works. The government does kick in 80%, but you have to pay 20%, and you have to pay for a Medigap policy for your 20% and a monthly premium. So Medicare is a cost share. And by the way, some people are saying that it's like um, socialized medicine. Do you all think we have socialized medicine in this country? Yeah. We do. Yeah. What is it? The VA, good, you get a gold star. The VA is socialized. It's owned by the government, run by the government. The doctors are hired and paid by the government. But Medicare's not. Medicare is based on the free market system. So you pay A, FICA tax into your hospital A, B is the doctor part. And it's supposed to cover what is ever medically necessary. And you're only entitled to it because you're 65, but that doesn't make it an entitlement. So Mrs. Smith goes to the doctor and he says, oh, you know, Mrs. Smith, there are so many people named Smith. I took your, I got your husband's test back and I'm not sure which Smith is your husband. He's either got Alzheimer's or he's got AIDS. <laughs> she said, well, you have to take the test again. Oh, he said, oh, Medicare will only pay for it one time. She said, what am I supposed to do? He says, I'll tell you what. Take him downtown, and if he finds his way home again, don't sleep with him. You'll know what he has. <laughs> but the bottom line is Medicare pays for what is medically necessary. It's how they code it. Then there's Medicare C, which we got when we were on this side of the aisle, because managed care Medicare C is private insurance. You join an HMO that is a private company. It's called Medicare Advantage. As a matter of fact, under the Bush administration, they give them more money to sign you up, about $3 more per person, because they wanted the private pressure. They wanted the private sector to compete with people choosing their own doctor. As a matter of fact, this guy, another guy died and went to heaven. And there was this long line all the way up to St. Peter, and everybody was filing right in. But when he got up there, St. Peter said, stop, I want to talk to you. He said, what do you mean stop? Everybody went in. He said, well, that guy worked for ARA. What a prince. He gave his life. He was just a public servant that was wonderful. This gentleman over here is so smart. He worked with his hands like Jesus, and it's like a carpenter, great guy. He said, well, I'm a great guy. St. Peter said, what do you do? He said, well, I'm the manager of an HMO. St. Peter said, I apologize. Of course you can go in, but you can only stay three days. <laughs> Medicare C or Medicare Advantage is private HMOs. And then 
there's Medicare C, the drug benefit. Now, I don't know about you all, but when I went to college, we took drugs to make the world look weird. And now the world looks very weird and we take drugs to make it look better. But Medicare D is the prescription drug benefit. I have to tell you this one, one joke. This couple fell in love at the senior center. They were past 60. They go into the Medicare doctor holding hands. They found their soulmate. They are in love. And they said, doctor, we want to have a child together. We are so in love. And the doctor said, wait a minute, wait a minute. And they said, will Medicare pay for it? The doctor said, you know, take this jar home. Come back tomorrow. We'll even see if it's a remote possibility. They come back the next day. They cannot look the doctor in the eye. They're looking down, they're embarrassed. The guy says, I used my left hand, I used my right hand. His wife, his girlfriend said, I even used my teeth. <laughs> we can't open the jar. <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking. <laughs> Well, Medicare was projected to go become insolvent, to not run out of money, more money going out than coming in. And guess what? Obamacare has extended it 12 years. Because here's the trick. The American people don't understand health care. All they want to know, and maybe even some of you, is what's my copay? Not how much does it really cost? Am I going to, the, am I using it or overusing it? It's I go when I need to go and I pay what I need to pay and thank God for Medicare. But the truth is, healthcare in this country is expensive for everybody. It's not just for you. It's not your fault that we spend so much on healthcare. As a matter of fact, Medicare has kept costs down. Now here's a real statistic. There is more money spent on Viagra and on breast implants than there is on Alzheimer's research. That means in 20 years, there will be people with very perky bodies and no idea what to do with them. But even though in really is we pay for what we want and the question for all of you is what do we want what leisure what is important to us that we put our time our energy and our hearts into because it's bigger than you it's bigger than all of us we do have Medicare those of us who are over 65 the question is they're trying to convince us we can't afford it and they're really trying to get the private sector to take over Medicare. The bottom line, if Medicare is more and more expensive, it'll wither on the vine, which is exactly what some politicians have said out loud they would like it to do. The real elephant in the room, and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it, is Medicaid. Medicaid is an entitlement. So don't let them lump it together. Medicaid is health care for people below the poverty line. And that comes 100% from general revenue. So we all pay for the poor. We all pay for the child, the mother, and even the older person who falls below the poverty line. And we all know people in nursing homes because 60% of all nursing home beds are paid for by Medicaid. It's not just that poor welfare mother popping out those babies. It's our parents and our friends who spend down everything they have and are picked up by Medicaid. My mother-in-law, who never liked me, <laughs> did have to go to a nursing home with dementia after we tried to keep her at home. She had enough money to pay for her care for three years. 
Now, if she knew she were paying for it herself, she would have died sooner. <laughs> but, but when her money ran out and we used it appropriately to care for her, Medicaid kicked in and she was able to stay in the same facility and she never knew the difference. So there's another question of how do we feel about those less fortunate, those who have to spend down from we're all one illness away from becoming impoverished? These are huge questions, but they are questions that are on the table right now. You know that this side wants to get rid of Obamacare. That's right on the table, it's not a secret. The question is, will this side stand up for it? Will this side stand up to the president's budget that wants to do more means testing to Medicare, that is considering raising the Medicare eligibility age, that is considering adding an extra tax onto your Medigap policy. These are the things that are on the table in the president's budget. So I'm not suggesting we are for or against the president or the other party. What I'm suggesting is we stand up for what we want. Because what they can say, they, the members of Congress, is, I'm not hearing from anybody. If you don't go visit them, call them, text them, write them, they do what they think is right. But they cannot ignore message after message after message coming in from constituents. I like to say, Politicians don't see the light until they feel the heat. And that's where Tony and, a and ARA and the National Committee to Preserve Social Security and Medicare can only do better than we've done before. Because we need to stand strong and firm and together. And there are a lot of other groups out there that we need to bring under our tent, not just us, because we each have different strengths. Our membership at the National Committee to Preserve Social Security and Medicare's $12 a year membership, our members are pretty elderly. And when we call a meeting, <laughs> if it's at night, they don't drive. <laughs> if it's during the day and it's raining, oh, they may not be there either. If it's too far, our members love to sign petitions, are very good about calling in, but they don't show up. You guys show up. I mean, standing there and showing up, going to your representative's office, wearing your ARA hat or your local union hat is very powerful. They care that you are there, even if they don't meet with you. It's a show of strength. The bigger the people you represent, the stronger the show of strength. There are three kinds of people. Those people that make things happen like Tony, and there are people who watch things happen like your neighbor. And then there's the people who say, what happened? <laughs> we all know those. I know. In 1982 is when they changed the law that you couldn't retire until you're 67. And when I turned 65, I thought I could retire. And then I found out it was 65 and 10 months. Because they do that before they leave Congress and they make the law for when they're gone. And your kids are not paying attention. Your kids are doing what they do. They're raising a family, they're trying to make a living. They're not even thinking about Social Security and Medicare. That's why it's up to you. If it's, these are programs we should be celebrating, not aggravating and saying we can't afford them. <coughs> But it's easy to fool people if they don't know how they work. It's easy to fool people when you have the president <coughs> saying, we need to do this to save Social Security. Well, the COLA doesn't save Social Security. It saves the government money, but it doesn't save Social It has nothing to do with projecting it beyond the 75 years. And by the way, Remember when Bush said you can't sustain Social Security? <coughs> that is how numbers lie. He used something called an infinite horizon. 
So if you figure any program out into infinity, it may not work. So I didn't throw out a lot of statistics because here's the reason. Statistics are like the keys. What they reveal is very interesting, but what they conceal is vital. <laughs> so be careful when they throw out these numbers and they tell you things can't be maintained or we can't afford it. It depends on what you're looking at and how you're looking at it. So I would like to suggest together, and not just us, your family members, bring in everybody you can by being fair and factual, not inflammatory by bringing in friends and colleagues who have a stake, by advocating for your children, advocating with your friends and with your allies. Don't fall asleep yet, I'm almost done. <laughs> and with your allies, because you all do have the power. You have the power to succeed, to have a movement, to make these programs be there for your children. I applaud all of you for being here because let me tell you something, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And you all are not the kind of people who will do that. Thank you for listening to me at the end of the day. Hi. The hospitality room will be open. And you've done a good job today, so I'll give you the number of it. Three, four, zero.